Jewel Erickson Eck finally hit the 30 goal plateau this season. So what does he get for a letter grade? We'll discuss on today's episode of Locked on Wild. We are your team every day. Your Locked on Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, Wild fans? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Lockdown Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And uh, on today's episode, we will go through Jewel Erickson X player report card for 2023-2024. And as was uh, suggested to me by a listener, a fantastic idea, by the way, we'll take a look at where Jewel Erickson X would slot in on a playoff team, a legitimate cup contender. And uh, we're going to backtrack and do this with Kirill and Matt Boldy, too. Love the idea. So we're going to add that into these player report cards going forward. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. And, folks, I'm going to just I'm just going to start by being a little real here. I was hoping to get this episode out earlier today. But sometimes life just uh, just throws you a curveball. Um, I lost my job today. So. You, you can't you can't plan for the unexpected um, to happen. And so uh, really just glad to be able to be with you uh, hanging out here for today's episode. And uh, we're, we're going to we're going to continue the lockdown wild content will continue. I'm not going anywhere in that respect. Just uh, obviously have a little more free time in my hands now. So. Uh, appreciate everybody for uh, for tuning in here today, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to just just kind of start things off with some uh, some not great you great news. We're gonna we're gonna make the best out of it, but let's get to the task at hand. Uh, Jewel Erickson Eck, his 2023-2024 season featured a first 30 goals, and let's just look at these statistics right off the bat. Erickson Eck finished the year with 77 games played. 30 goals scored, which was a career high. 34 assists, which was second only to what he had last year. 64 total points, a career high. He was a plus 18, a career high. 60 penalty minutes also was a career high. Erickson Eck had 17 even strength goals, which was the second most he has ever had in a season. 12 power play goals on the season, which he has done the last three seasons. Um, all told 267 shots. He shot 11.2%. He managed to somehow have a career high in faceoffs taken and faceoff winning percentage, besting his number last year, 49.7% in the faceoff circle this past season, 55 blocks, which tied last year for the most he's ever had. 169 hits, far and away the most he's ever had. And Erickson Eck finished, I think it was 10th in the uh, the Selkie Trophy voting uh, for this season, which we'll also talk about um, here in a little bit as well. But pretty much every metric you look at, Erickson Eck exceeded what was the previous career high for him. Even shots, I mean, total shot attempts, 424. That was a career high. Time on ice, 1,581 minutes of ice time. He averaged 20 minutes, 32 seconds per night. That was a career high by far. 796 faceoff wins, a career high by almost 100. 
And total faceoffs taken again, career high by uh, over a hundred this year. And if you look at it through the chaos at the beginning of the season, Jewel Erickson Eck was the Wild's most consistent player. He had 10 goals in the first 19 games of the season, 17 total points in those first 19 games. Dean Evison then at that point is shown the door. And uh, from November 27th to the point in which Erickson Eck got hurt, because he did miss some games down the stretch and was not the same guy after. So you can really take the Erickson Eck season and break it up into different parts. From November 27th to February 6th, he had 11 goals. 11 assists in those 30 games, 22 total points. Why did I stop things at February 6th, you may ask? Well, that was the point in which Erickson Eck became the um, became part of the Kaprizov Boldy Erickson Eck trio. And so Erickson Eck's numbers from February 7th to the end of the season little bit of a drop, nine goals, 16 assists. He had 25 points in 28 games down the stretch. But again, he was a con very solid contributor for what was, at the time, the best statistical line in the entirety of the NHL. And so Eric Sinek is a he's a fascinating case study because I think if you gave Bill Guerin the option, um, he would clone Jewel Erickson Eck as many times as he could because what, what does Jewel Erickson Eck do that we appreciate? He plays incredibly physical. He plays fantastic defense. He is widely regarded as one of the most uncomfortable players to play against because he just finds a way to get under your skin. Time and time again, he finds a way to annoy players he's playing against through his physicality and through his just his overall demeanor when he's out there on the ice guy is an absolute. He's a terminator in the off season. He gets himself in incredible shape. He has overcome some pretty substantial injuries. The fact that he even got himself to the point of being able to get back on the ice against Dallas last year after breaking his leg is, is insane. It speaks to just the, the, Jim rat mentality that uh, that Erickson Eck brings to the table. And there really is honestly just a lot to like that Jewel Erickson Eck brings to the table. He can win you face offs. He is the net front guy in the power play. He is a huge contributor to the penalty kill. And as we saw after John Hines took over, Jewel Erickson Eck basically became the number one go to center for this team in pretty much any situation. If John Hines needed a face off one late in a game, Jewel Erickson Eck was his guy. If John Hines needed key players on the ice to get a goal to tie the game or to take the lead, Jewel Erickson Eck was part of that group. If he needed a power play goal, Jewel Erickson Eck was out there. If he needed uh, a, a group to be able to get a goal in overtime, Jewel Erickson Eck was out there. He was consistently, consistently, up until his injury, one of the uh, most important players on the ice for the Minnesota Wilds time and time again this season. And the fact that he just continues to find ways to incrementally up his performance every season is frankly impressive. The fact that he's able to just up the ante even a little bit, like 49.4% in the faceoff circle last year, that's a good number. Right around 50% is where you want to be. Slightly under, okay. You want to be above that, but if you're slightly, if you're in the ballpark of 50%, that's where you want to be with the faceoffs. And in more attempts and in more critical faceoffs, he found a way to do it this year. And Every metric in which Jewel Erickson Eck recorded stats 
um, just just continued an upward trend. Corsi four percentage for Eric Sinek. In a career high number of Corsi events, he had a Corsi four percentage of 55.1% in all situations. A career high. Bested that by a couple of percentage points from where he was at last year. Um, in, in terms of, you know, goals per 60, career high. Uh, points per 60, 2.4, just off of his career high from last year. Point shares, 4.7 offensive point shares this year, 2.5 defensive point shares for 7.1 total point shares. He contributed to seven points in the standings by himself this season. And so no matter how you slice it, Jewel Erickson just continues to, he just continues to find ways to up his performance year in, year out. Uh, and look, Kirill, Brock Faber, Jewel Erickson you want to list the most important players to this Minnesota Wild team? Those are probably the three guys. Jewel Erickson is just an integral part of what this team does. and. His performance speaks for itself. So a a great season for Jewel Erickson Eck, to say the least. Um, but interesting to kind of look at where like where he slots in. So we'll talk about that to finish the show. We'll go over some of your thoughts as to Jewel Erickson Eck and what he brings to the table, uh, as well as uh, looking at the X and YouTube voting as we hand out letter grades for Jewel Erickson Eck's performance. That is coming up here on today's episode of Locked on Wild. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by FanDuel. Folks, it is getting to be crunch time for both the NHL and the NBA. We've gotten to the conference finals in both the NBA and the NHL. There's no better time to cash in than right now on FanDuel. And get this, right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's right. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. For instance, Minnesota Timberwolves taking on the Dallas Mavericks in game one of the Western Conference Finals. Minnesota Timberwolves are currently minus four And so if you are feeling so inclined and you're in a state in which you can throw five bucks on the wolves. And if that bet wins, then you have 150, $150 in bonus bets to throw at whatever you would like baseball, NHL playoffs, you name it. FanDuel will let you have it. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back to today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day, or in today's case, we thank you for uh, hanging out with us here as you are winding down your evening. So, Jewel Erickson Eck, let's take a look at uh, what you thought about his performance this season. We had uh, a ton of response as usual and uh, appreciate everybody that takes the opportunity to vote and to uh, let their voices be heard as to uh, where you feel like Jewel Erickson X should be ranked um, with a letter grade. As we pull up the response on X, we'll do that first. Uh, 68 total votes for our poll. And Jewel Erickson Eck received an A grade for 76.5% of respondents. 20.6% said B. And one person voted each for C or D slash F. Uh, Matthew on Twitter said, I was torn on A or B. Went with A. My only thing is I wish he would get more love for the Selkie. He's always overlooked. Don't know the metrics, but he seemed to have another great season here. Maybe one for Russo to expand on sometime. Eck has been vital for us. Solid A. 
Urban says, excellent season. Continued to grow as a top two-way player fitting the Bergeron mold. Over to YouTube. Here are the uh, responses that uh, that we received from all of you. Trav saying, I would say B to B plus. He was an absolute ghost the last two months of the season when he wasn't with Kirill much. Uh, also, um, let's see here. Eric Wallstrom, when Koivu left, Eck took over, and it is nice to finally have a center that can play offense. I definitely will agree on that one. Um, Gail Brote, absolutely an A. Tyler Bach said an A all day. So uh, a lot of A's in the comments. And um, number of votes that we received... Let's just uh, let's just get to that number here so that I have the definitive one. 118 votes for our poll. A was 79% of the votes. B was 18%. 3% said a C. 1% said a D. And there were no Fs here. So let's let's look at this offensively. Uh, on a scale of one through five for offense for Jewel Erickson Eck. I'm going to give him a four because net front guy in the power play. And he actually started to, you know, he, he started to shoot more um, from a little, little further out this year, as opposed to just being kind of the birdie guy around the net. And so we'll factor that in, but Trav is right. There was a, uh, there was a bit of a drop. Um, for Erickson Eck over the last bit of the season. And so we'll we'll factor that in too. So offense, I'm going to say four out of five. Defense, I mean, I cannot figure out why Erickson Eck just continues to not get love like he did um, in 2020, 2021, when he finished fourth in the Selkie trophy voting. I just can't figure out why he does not get further into the um, into the voting. And honestly, I think this season, it probably has a lot to do with the overall um, the overall performance of the wild themselves because um, it just like the guy just is continually just a monster uh, and is just physical defensively. He is. He's as good of a defensive center as you're going to find. And obviously this year, the voting um, with Austin Matthews being one of the finalists, Alexander Barkov winning it. Those guys are elite. Those guys are great defensive centers too. Um, I, I just, I think the fact that the wild were not a great team really at all this year, I think that factored in this year, but defense I'm going four and a half out of five. Because again, the overall team defense was pretty subpar at many points. Um, but Erickson X still like he, he's still as good as you're going to find um, from a defensive perspective. So I'll knock him a little bit for that, but I'm still going to go. I'm still going to go four out of five out of five. And special teams, I mean, same thing. Like I'll say four and a half again here. Because he is net front on the power play, number one center on the penalty kill. Like he is as integral of a piece to the special teams as you will find. Penalty kill was not good. Penalty kill was terrible all season. And so we're going to knock a little bit for that. Um, but again, just, just a hugely important piece to this Minnesota Wild team. So letter grade wise, I'm going A minus. For Erickson Eck, for what he did this past season, thirty goals for the first time. Uh, he he just continues to find ways to up his performance from year to year, and that that definitely has to that definitely has to to count for major props because so many players on this team up and down, up and down. And now you kind of wonder, like, what does Eric Sinek do to improve for next year? 
Like, are we talking 30, 35 goals? Are we talking 70 points? Are we talking 50% on the face-off circle? Like, there are only, <laughs> there is a limited number of things that he can do to improve his performance um, even more than he already has. So, um, I'm going A minus for Jewel Erickson Eck, but if you want to, if you want to go B plus, if you want to go B, if you want to go A, I'm, I'm not going to fault anybody, uh, for that to say the least. Now, where is Jewel Erickson Eck slot in on a legitimate playoff contender? We'll discuss as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. We will have an episode in uh, up during the morning tomorrow. Um, again, just, just had one of those days today, um, but we'll be able to, uh, to get that going for you uh, in the morning tomorrow and then should have a more regular recording schedule with some time freed up. But had this question posed um to my email inbox locked on wild at gmail.com if you have anything that you would like to you know questions potential uh potential topics for the show feel free to email locked on wild at gmail.com we will uh, we'll get them on I'm happy to take listener feedback in any form. Um, so locked on wild at gmail.com, but, uh, but Pat suggested, why don't you take wild players and look at where they would play on a legitimate contender so that we can see what we have. Then at the end of all the player report cards, we can take a look as to, um, where things are at, what this team still needs. Fantastic idea. And so we're going to do that for Jewel Erickson Eck, but we're going to do that for Kirill and Matt Boldy too. So let's start with the easy one. Uh, Kirill Kaprizov is a bona fide, legitimate top line winger. Uh, no matter what team, you could put him on the Tampa Bay Lightning. You could put him on the Colorado Avalanche. You could put him on the Dallas Stars. You could put him on any team throughout the NHL. He's a legitimate, bona fide top line winger that would make any team that had him a lethal contender. So Kirill is Kirill is the easiest part of this puzzle, I think, because he is the most like tangible. What do they have that we don't? He is the most tangible piece of the puzzle. You can say, hey, we got something that a lot of teams don't have. Um, so he legitimately slots in as a top line winger on whatever, whatever team you put him on. Now, Matt Boldy is an interesting one because I would say right now, Boldy is probably on a, on a stacked team. Like if let's just use the Dallas stars for an example. Um, I would say Boldy is probably a second line guy for Dallas. Um, Second line, probably for Colorado, too. I, I think he slots in as a second line guy for a playoff contender. Matt Boldy has the potential to up that depending on kind of how his game evolves over the next couple of seasons. But it's foolish to it's foolish to suggest that Boldy is like a third line maybe guy or a fourth line guy for a, like a Dallas team. It, it, you put him on, you put him on any roster and he's, he's going to be a top six guy. Like that's, that's not a debate. So Boldy, I would say is a second line guy. I'm going to say the same thing for Jewel Erickson Eck because we saw Jewel Erickson Eck step up his performance and show that he's capable of playing with guys like Kirill and Matt Boldy and being productive. But folks, a 1C is a unicorn. Like think about all these 1Cs that dot these playoffs. 
Connor McDavid is a one seed. That that's not debatable. Jack Eichel is a one seed. That's not debatable. Um, you know, th there just are so many instances you point to, and you're like, that that guy is a definite one seed. And Jewel Erickson Eck may get there, but it's it's a question that you just have to. If somebody asks you, is he a one seat? You just have to immediately respond with whatever your you whatever your brain says. And my brain just says no. Now he's maybe like a one B, but he is he is somebody that I think teams would drool over, especially a team like Colorado. He'd be there, he'd be there too, see hands down. Uh Casey Middlestat, you know, had a had a good season. But if you get if if Jewel Erickson Eck was available at the trade deadline, Colorado had that big of a need, they would have they would have moved mountains, literally, to pun intended. They would have moved mountains to make it happen. I mean, any team that is a playoff contender. Jewel Erickson Eck is a two C. He's a definite two C. So this kind of begs the question of for the wild to get to the point that they're in the same vein as all these teams that are still playing either Jewel Erickson Eck just needs to continue to take, like if he continues to take, um, if he continues to take these strides, like he continues to just incrementally improve. He can get there. I, I think if you can get Erickson Eck to like a consistent 30 goal guy, somewhere around 75 points, which if you would have asked me that two years ago, if that was possible, uh, the year that he finished fourth in the Selkie and he had 19 goals and 30 total points. If you'd have told me we would have gotten from that point to basically doubling the point total, adding 11 goals and uh, and getting to be a 60 point guy, I would have had a hard time believing it. And so that's the thing is, you know, we saw some glimpses of it this year that Erickson Eck is capable of playing that role in spurts. If he can get to where he is capable of filling that spot like long term um that's that's going to take this team to a new level but until he does like he would be he'd be a second line guy and so you know th there there are two guys that we've already done report cards on and i worry less about i worry less about jewel erickson Eck because the preparation that he puts in to the season, the preparation he puts in, the time he spends, every single player on this roster should strive to be able to do that. Uh, the work ethic is just unmatched. Only guy that really can top that work ethic is probably Kirill. So Jewel Erickson Eck has a lot of what you want for a top six center. He has pretty much everything you would want for a top six center on a playoff team. If he continues his incremental improvements, then he can start to close the gap. But all in all, he's one of the guys that I worry about the least on this team because, you know, you, you punch in, you take your, your time card, you punch in, you punch out. You're going to get pretty consistent performances from Jewel Erickson Eck pretty much every game that he's on the ice. And when he's not on the ice, the Wild definitely feel it. So, all told, great season for Jewel Erickson Eck. I'm going with an A minus for uh, for the year, but honestly, there really there really isn't a lot that he needs to improve on. Like, if anything the only area I would offer even as a potential area for improvement is just to shoot more, like to just continue to shoot, continue to take the shots, start to add a little more range, you know, face off circles and in is a pretty good spot for him. And so he just continues to add that, 
that offense to his arsenal, and that continues to make him more and more dangerous as a center. And he has rapidly closed the gap between him and Miko Koivu. And I think by the time it's all said and done, I don't think it's going to be a question as to where he ranks amongst the best centers that this team has ever had. So good season for Jewel Erickson Eck, a minus in my book. And uh, here's to hoping for m- more of the same uh, come 2024, 2025 on the show tomorrow. We are going to continue with our draft profiles. Uh, we will talk about Cole Eiserman amongst others, just getting you a little bit of a look as to what they bring to the table. And with Cole Eiserman, it's a lot of scoring. So that should be fun tomorrow. Uh, again, appreciate everybody tuning in as always. Uh, thank you for helping, uh, brighten my day a little bit here. Um, listening to this appreciate all the likes all the comments if you are so inclined make sure to leave us a review on your favorite audio platforms uh subscribe on youtube hit the like button on this video too it helps with our exposure and uh, it helps to uh, get the word out to more minnesota wild fans for off-season programming which will continue we will continue to roll through the off-season here at Lockdown Wild, we got some fun stuff planned for uh, the next couple of months, so stay tuned. Uh, you can find all of our episodes, plus you can find new episodes every Monday through Friday right here on Lockdown Wild, all part of the Locked On Podcast Network.